All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to No Night in America. Hope we, uh, hope you all had a great weekend, great holiday weekend. Uh, excited to be talking about some great stuff tonight. I know that you're all interested. That's why you're here. Joining me on Monday night, or is it the Dia de los Huecos, the Day of the Dead, if you're uh, from Mexico heritage. Uh, we're going to be talking about some dead Benjamins, dead presidents, and how to help raise that uh, for your deal flow. We'll talk about OPM, other people's money, and really what it comes down to more so or focus on tonight is the talking to investors. It's not a difficult thing if you know how to do it and approach it from a different mindset. So many, I've, I, honestly, this week and last, actually the last two, three weeks, I've gotten more questions, more phone calls from, from you guys out there in Note Nation about this specific subject. Oh my God, I'm starting to market some deals. I'm starting to get people to reach out to me. I'm starting to people see some of the things that I'm doing and I'm, I'm wanting to have this conversations with them. I'm wanting to, to, to get them, you know, they're interested. How do I convert them? How do I get them to say yes to me and, and get rock and roll to fund my deal? So tonight, it's a little bit about that, but here's, here's what I want to go before we dive into the nuggets there for you guys is take a pen and paper out, ask some questions. There'll be plenty of time in the end to ask questions. Try to leave your questions till the end because I guarantee I'll probably cover them as we get rock and roll. And there may be some time at the end. We have some time for some role playing. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. But for those of you guys who are joining us for the first time, hey, welcome to Note Night in America. We host these calls every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central, provided uh, I'm not on a plane somewhere or it's not a holiday for the most part. But uh, we have a variety of people that attend Note Night in America. It's investors of notes, real estate investors, people interested in learning more about note business. They are recorded. I did hit the red button. I see it's recording live. Um, you can always watch these on our YouTube channel at weclosenotes.tv. And then also, we do have them coming out pretty regularly on, on uh, anywhere that you listen to podcasts. So it is on Apple. It's also on the website as well. I believe episode 89 uh, goes live tomorrow, the blog and thing. But you can always check it out at the Note Night in America podcast. Check it out there. Hey, do me a favor. Hit a five-star review. Uh, or hit a five star and, and leave reviews. So I'd love to have you guys on there. But anyway, getting into OPM, talking to investors. Now, most people think of when they got to talk to investor, it, it's like a scene out of Wall Street. You, meant, you know, Charlie Sheen's character, Bud Fox, like he and on trying to land a whale. I'm trying to land Gordon Gecko. You know what I mean? Um, you know, that's that, and other people may think of, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street when he's like, yes. We're closing people on and they're selling them on some things. I mean, Jordan Belfort was really the first person to innovate like the the the, the, um, the call book, the call book. I actually was speaking with a buddy of mine who uh, dated Jordan Belfort's sister during the back during the true Wolf of Wall Street days. And the book at uh, their, you know, investment company, I guess you could say, or boiler room was like two inches thick with all sorts of objections. They object to this, you flip over to that. If they said this, you object to it. So that's maybe not. Maybe you're thinking maybe it's going to be high pressured sales, like in the movie Boiler Room. You know, where you feel like a fish out of water starting out. You know, I got to open 40 accounts and I'm off and rock and roll. No, that's not the case. It's And it's also not going to, you're not going to end up risk getting shot at. You ain't got to change your voice like they did in the movie Sorry to Bother You. You also don't have to uh, risk having a, a Coke can come flying across the crowd and hit you in the head either. Nobody is going to shoot you or stab you. All right. With what we talk about tonight, Unless you're raising money in the hood, and I've raised money in the hood before, never got shot at. Oh, I take that back. I have been shot at twice, but it wasn't because I was raising capital. It's because I was in a bad neighborhood. But tonight, it's literally just talking about the conversation. And many people will get so nervous about this when you're brand new. If it's not something you've ever done before, that's okay. That's very normal. That's A-okay. It is normal to feel nervous about what you're doing, especially if you don't come from a you know, any type of sales background, stuff like that. So the number one thing that you have to realize, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to start raising capital or taking OPM, other people's money and putting in deals, is that you're offering, it's an opportunity. You're not going out looking for a crappy house that you're not going to do anything with. You're looking, you've got an opportunity. You've got a real deal. You found a, a nugget. You found a deal that can turn into a very positive outcome one way or another. It's notes, either get them back reperforming or you foreclose and take the property back. It's an opportunity. You aren't begging for money. And this is that's the first thing that a lot of people, well, I don't want to come across like I'm begging for money. And this comes from people that have capital or people that have no cap. You're not begging for money. You're offering them an opportunity. If you're 
best friend was the founder of Google or let's say YouTube or Tesla or something like that, you'd want or Bitcoin, you'd want them to tell you about it, right? Because you then you could invest with them or do something with them if it makes sense, right? You're offering people an opportunity. If they say no, that's okay. All right. Uh, what you have to realize if the deal that you're going to put them in wasn't a deal, you wouldn't be here talking to them. If what you're doing wasn't a deal, wasn't going to be something profitable, you wouldn't be here. You'd be doing something else, right? You're not here to waste their time. All right. You don't want them to waste your time as well, but you're not here to waste people's time. We, let's, just, let's just agree to that. Okay. You are offering them by them, friends, families, people you meet, investment clubs, people that answer direct mail, emails, whatever. You are offering them an opportunity to invest with it, an opportunity to put some lazy assets to work, to take turn their certificate of disappointment into something good. You're going to give them an above average rate of return than what they're used to getting. And they don't have to go out and find it. People don't have to go out and hunt their own stuff. You're finding the deals. You're giving them an opportunity to get involved with you on a passive basis for an above average return. Okay. It is not high pressure sales. This is the last thing. It's high pressure sales. It's literally talking about an opportunity. Hey, this for you, great. If it's not, move on. But at least can I share with you what I'm doing? Okay, and it's not going to be for everyone. You don't want everyone to be your investor. There's the people out there that are assholes that sue happy or talk bad about people, or they just have no knowledge of real estate. They're not sophisticated. Or they're not smart. Or is their last five grand? They're, they're hanging on by a limb. No, it's not for everyone. You don't want everyone to be investing with you. It is basically, you're gonna eventually find over time that you hit and you align yourselves with a specific amount of people, specific niche of people that comes out to it. And what you have to realize, everybody sucks at this at the beginning, all right? Embrace the suck is a, a term that the army uses, embrace the suck or the Marines use it. Forgive me for getting whichever one, maybe they both use it. We've used it here for years, embrace the suck. You're gonna suck at things at first. You're not going to have your perfect pitch down. If you wait to get your perfect pitch down before you talk to people, you're never going to talk to people because the only way you get better is by screwing up. Okay. Embrace the suck and realize you're going to hone your skills. If it's your first time or a hundred time, there's so many things you screw up on and that's okay. But you have to realize that it's a lot easier raising capital. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, is a lot easier for most people than it is going out and finding deals. And so be like, what? I'm like, it is because once you realize it's not such this crazy grandiose thing, you know, it's not something to be scared of. It's something to embrace. And then you come from a different mindset instead of begging, oh, they won't invest with me. Well, why would they invest with you? If you're not the person doing all the work, you've got a whole team behind you. Why not? And one thing, ladies and gentlemen, good deals find money. I had an investor reach out to me yesterday. I got a million dollar, uh, a $5 million hotel making 5% I can take over. Do you have an investor that will invest it with me? I'm like, so for what? 5%. What's the, 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 is there a discount? I don't know. Anybody's interested in making just 5% of their money. That's an active real estate investor. Now you might be, a, if you want to go out and raise capital and put a fund together. Yeah, you could probably do, oh no, I didn't want to do that. Well, that's a different thing. You got to start off with individual deals. You can't try to hit a grand slam out of the park your first time out. It's not going to happen. So I've raised millions and millions of dollars. We'll continue to raise millions and millions of dollars, especially with our fund that we're working through right now. But the whole premise is if there wasn't deals out there, I wouldn't be raising capital, okay? The deal comes first. Now, our buddy Joel Block or Bullseye Capital Soul, you, it's good to have the money so you can capitalize. Yeah, but you've got to build some experience first. And we're not talking about raising a million dollars. We're not, we're talking 25, 50, 75, 100, starting that process, get the ball going. And that's why we talk about, hey, starting off with one-off deals. And here's the most important thing when it comes to raising capital. And this is what's so great about the note business compared to fix and flippers and other things like that. You aren't doing this deal all by yourself. You're not the person out there trying to mow the lawn and fix the, you know, fix the paint and you know, paint it and fix the eaves or rehabbing the property when you have no experience. That's what's so great about the note business is that we have vendors, we have attorneys, realtors, uh, servicing companies. You got me to cut you through it. I mean, I'm, I'm talking with 12 people right now throughout the different weeks of people working on their first couple deals and holding their hands through it. That's totally great. But you're not in this alone. And many people are like, oh, I'm all this alone. No, you're not. When you have no experience, leverage your team. We'll talk more about that throughout it. But here's the thing I want you to keep in mind. I, I Somebody saw this the other day and found it really valuable. That I said, everybody could raise a million dollars in the next 90 days. Everybody could raise a million dollars 
in the next 90 days. Now, the question is, how many people do you need to fund a million dollars? Well, just one with a million dollars, right? But that's probably not going to happen right off the bat. All right. You probably need a few people to come in. Now, if you got two people with half a million, great. If you got four with uh, or five with 200, great. 10 with 100 grand, great. The magical number that we see across the board is 67% of people that have an IRA have more than 150 grand in there. So you're somewhere between, honestly, five and 10 people away from raising a million dollars. Now, if you need to knock it down to uh, 50,000, you'll need 20 people or 40 people at 25,000, okay? I would not invest with people or have people invest with you that have less than 25 grand and make sure it sure is hell not their last 25 grand. But you don't need to raise a million dollars to go buy an individual note. There's a lot of people out there buying 30, 40, $50,000 assets across the country that are st still great, phenomenal returns on investments. For a passive investor, it's also good for the active investor. Okay. You don't need a million dollars. You need somewhere, honestly, to get to a million dollars, you need somewhere between six and 10 people, maybe a little bit more, depending on where you're at. But the older you are, the actually, the more established you're going to have friends and relatives and people that identify you. The younger you are, so if you're sub 30, sub 35, no offense to you guys, we all got to be there somewhere. You're probably going to deal with more people that have smaller amounts, 25 to 50, to get the ball rolling initially. Okay. Now, I brought this up. And I wanted to share something with you. And, and maybe you've seen this before, maybe you haven't. But one of the things that we do, we track our audience, okay? I track where people are watching us from, whether it's across our podcast episodes or across our YouTube videos or our Vimeo um, channel. I know roughly where people are watching us from. And one of the things that we constantly do is look at where our market is, who's opening where, where's people located? Because then we'll spend time and money on those markets and, and cities and stuff like that. So we can capitalize on knowing what's going on in that market deals in those markets along with, hey, what are the trends of people maybe not investing in those markets where they're looking to invest as well? And one of the things that we do is we always will look and see, okay, how many investors are in a market? Now, last year during COVID, we did a whole top 40 markets. I did a top 40 roadshow, all right, where we went through 40 markets over like uh, 30 days. And we pulled up the number of investors and the number of people with an IRA count and the people with an IRA of over 150,000. And so I just want to share with you, no matter where you're at, there are so many people around you that have money really not making anything. When, we talk, when we've talked with some of the um, people at different self-directed IRA companies, they tell us what they have. Or they say, hey, what do you have under management? One billion, you know, half a million, half a bill, whatever. And always the number is about 30 to 40% of the money they have under management is making zero. Think about that. And it's making 0%. And they, they, you have investors that put money into a self-directed IRA to invest with that have not pulled the trigger, okay? They're sitting there waiting for somebody to show up and help them make some money. They're just looking for the right deal and the right opportunity, okay? Keep that in mind. Now, when we pull the numbers here, these numbers might be a little outdated by about a year, but when we pull the top 30 markets to give you a bit of an idea how many IRA, people that have an IRA in a Pacific city, Look at this. Now, our number one market is Houston, Texas. People that have a, a, an IRA in Houston, it's 92,000. That number is actually low. It's over, over 100,000. The number goes up for you. But you see the number uh, is like LA, 171,000 people have an IRA of some sort. Chicago, 141,000. What's the next highest one? In Houston, there at 92. San Diego, over right over 90,000 now. Um, I mean, just crazy when you think about it. St. Louis, 60,000, that was a number that surprised me. Dallas, 50,000. Austin has 40 plus thousand numbers going up. Orlando, 27,000. San Jose, 57,000. There's a lot of people that have money sitting in an IRA account making zilch, making nothing, making barely anything. And they're looking, it's literally like millions of people have cancer and you have the cure for cancer, ladies and gentlemen. You have the cure for a poor return. You have the cure to help them get their money into something that helps them get an above average return on their investment. And you have to realize when you adopt that mentality and start thinking about that, you should it should change how you approach this. Instead of like, oh, you're like, oh, I actually am offering something really good here. I have an opportunity. Not only is it a, it's truly a win-win. It's a win for me. It's a win for them. But it's really a win for them, not only to get their IRA back up and running, but, but keeping up with inflation and all the other stuff that's going out there. 
And so many people forget about that. All right. So the question I like to ask is, is what if you had a thousand, just a thousand people, not millions of people, not 20,000, not a thousand people in your county that you had their name, their address, where they live, a, a working email and a phone number. It would be very valuable. The question I always ask, if you had that list, you would know what their home value was. You could figure out if they are homeowners and based on, what kind of house they have, you could probably determine what kind of income level they have. How do you figure that? Well, one of the magical things that we do when we see somebody live in a specific house, what we do is we figure, okay, take that times a four, take their house value times like a 4% interest rate or less. Okay. Depends on the market. And what that, what's that annual interest only payment would be divided by 12, then multiply that number behind by three or four. So it gives you a, because basically people are going to live above 30, 33, 34% of what they make. When they have a house now that number is just a bit of a, a, a our own numbers but that comes from me being a mortgage broker back in the day taking what their home value is multiply it times basically 0 0.2 0 0.4 whatever the interest rate is at the time i'd say 0.4 so you're higher than a little bit level that's going to give you total interest paid divide that number by th uh, three and that's roughly what their monthly income is okay uh susan asked the question do you contact self direct IRA companies in those cities to find out what clients need somewhere to put their money no, Susan, I already know that they need somewhere to put their money. There's no doubt about that. No, and a self-directed IRA company is not going to give you that list, okay? But you can go out on the county records and find people at the county appraisal who've bought a property with their IRA, people at the county um, recorder's office who've lent money out of that. Or you can pay like a list service. Like what we do a lot of times is we'll buy a list from a list service that gives us people, you know, give us 16,000 names, across the country in different cities that we'll dive in. But if you pull this information, right? The question I would ask, if you had a thousand people, would you do anything with this list? And if you would say yes, yes. Say, if you're in the chat role watching me or on YouTube or wherever you're watching the replay, say, yes, I would do something. Yes, yes, I would do something, okay? And the question I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you right here, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Because I already know some of you know, here's the thing, only 10% of people take action, all right? And I'm, I'm making this a joke a little bit because I, I love you guys, but honestly, no. Many of you have already been through a workshop we talked about this. We showed you how to pull those lists and pull those leads and stuff like that. And none of you are doing anything. It's the most, that's the most frustrating thing on that. My education side of what we do is that we show people, we will literally show you how to pull these lists and people will not take action. But if you take action, you will find success, okay? And honestly, less than 10% of people never take action. And the question is, you won't do anything with it, which is sad because there's literally, you have the cure. If you got a, let's just use an example. Say you've got a performing note that you wanna cash out. It's a great it's a great return for somebody. You can bring something into it, cash out a big chunk of the stay into the deal or just sell it. Or if you got non-performing notes, there's people looking for returns. There's literally people, dying out there for opportunities and the, we shown you how to raise the capital we show you how to find these it's just about you would you do anything with them and the thing that scares people and that's what we're talking about tonight is yeah i can find the list but what do i say scott what do i say to them how do i talk to them what oh my god they're going to ask me questions yes that's okay you have to realize ladies and gentlemen you can find people on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. We talked about connecting with those investors. That's one of the things that we do. We'll pull these lists and we'll start slowly connecting with them, either through email or through LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. We've got a VA that helps us with that implementation. It takes some time, but we're not going to be around just for a year. We're going to be around a long term, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. I expect to be working to my 80s. It's not really work if you enjoy what you do. Okay, I probably won't be doing no, no Night in America's on Monday nights at the point, but who knows? Um, but the point what I'm trying to make is here is there are investors around where you're at right now. All of you could go to the county records in every county, the county recorder, the county clerk, and look for IRA companies, equity trust people who are the grantee, grantor, the mortgagee or mortgagor in your county to find people who have lent money out of their IRA. And you know what you could do? You can send old fashioned direct email or direct mail to them. This is still the only thing that we send mail to. Now we don't send postcards or yellow letters out to note investors or banks. We don't do that. But we do send some direct mail out to 
IRA investors. And I want to share that with a little bit to kind of show you how we preempt that call, how we preempt the conversation, how we get people that we reach out to to say, hi, I'm interested in finding out some more. Okay. But like literally I can pull up, I can go to a city and pull up addresses where people live off our list and literally see exactly where they're at in the minute. This is a, a uh, map. We had a property in Cincinnati that we took back. And what did we do? We literally sent out about 850 postcards uh, about that deal to investors in the area there. And we raised a ton of capital from it for that one deal. It, people were fighting over it to fund the deal, which made our price go up. But it also said, listen, if it's not the right deal for you, we can call you on the next one. And that's the whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. Not everybody's going to be ready to go when you're ready to go. This is why it's got to be something that you're doing on a consistent basis. And this is not to be, not to be intimidating. Like I said, not like, it's not like boiler room, bye, bye, bye now. Or This is meant to be something that's easy to put in place with a little bit of work and a little bit of investment. You're sorry. So the first thing that we do a lot of times is we drop a postcard. And this is one of our postcards that we send out. Is your piggy on track for retirement? That's the front of the card. Okay. Logo down at the bottom. It's what we send out. And on the back, and then it, and I'll share with what we do on the back. But if you've got this postcard, and I'm going to ask you all here, which of these hot buttons, if something was offered up on the backside, I'll tell you what, we buy these at 5,000 and chunks, 6,000 chunks, because they usually give us an extra bonus from Postcard Mania. That's who we use. We buy them in a bunch because we use these not only for, these are the big five by seven postcards. They're very glossy. It's got our name, our logo, my, you know, our, our company name, website, phone number, an email address on there. And then we leave the rest of it blank, but we add different things to it to switch it up to test our marketing, depending on where we're sending it to. Now, if I'm going to a RIA club, I'll pass these out as business cards. Say, hey, if you'd like to get more information, fill out your name and information and just turn it back into me. But when we send it out, you know, if you've got a big five by seven floppy postcard like this, would you look at it? Especially if I read a little thing on there, hey, you're looking to invest, or I see you've used your IRA to buy a property in this neck of the woods. You want to, yeah, we'd love to talk with you. You know, hey, check out this website, check out our website or video on how to capitalize on 2022 or talk about distressed debt or your little pitch video. We talked about a pitch deck video for 15 minutes. Hey, find out how we're making America great again, one default to borrow at a time. You know, would you, if you put a 1-800 number or a phone number there where people could call you to ask you questions about a deal, maybe put a picture of a property. Hey, we just closed this in your backyard. Give us a phone call to find out how you could have been, the, could have made an above average return by working with us. Maybe you request an ebook is the whole reason why we wrote a book, you know, how to buy real estate. We send this out a lot of times. Hey, if you'd like to learn about note investing because all the defaults, go to this website and you can download your free ebook or request a one. We'll send it to you. Okay. Or if I'm local, Hey, I'd love to meet you for coffee. Let's go meet the Starbucks or Mojo's down the, the street here or wherever at uh, Pan Panera, someplace neutral. If you'd like to meet for coffee, let's do that. Or meet in person, come by the office or let's meet, you know, at the title company, some I mean it's a meetup group. All right. It's not meant to be a difficult thing, but when we start, when we plan our years out, like it's now November 1st, we're already planning for 2022 where I'm going to speak, where I'm going to go. Like I'm going to an event in a couple of weeks in, uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, in, uh, where am I going? It's the private lender expo in Atlantic city, New Jersey. I'm taking a stack of these business cards with us. Hey, if you'd like to find more information about our deals, hey, turn it in or go to this website and register. Very simple information to pass out to some of these. Now, now, how many of you would throw it away? Some of you would throw it away, which is okay. You're not the right person. If you throw it away, that's fine. Don't care. But I guarantee most people right now, and this is why we're doing this on the first part of November, is that people through the next two months and into the Q1, they're going to be looking at their quarterly statements. They're going to be looking at their investment accounts. They're going to be looking at inflation, the price of gas going up and everything else goods, and seeing if their numbers are working. I mean, I've got people calling me out of the blue. Oh, hey, if you got anything under 30 grand or under 40 grand or under 50 grand, I'm looking to buy. I need to do something. <laughs> my, my cost to rehab has gone through the roof. My, I can't find deals anymore. I need opportunities. And you, as note investors, ladies and gentlemen, if you're willing to put the work in, if you find the deals, you know, you're offering these people an opportunity, but you have to start doing something. Sitting at home and praying for your investors to show up at your front door with bags of cash is not going to happen. Okay. You have to start taking, we are sharing, I'm, I'm, I'm literally sharing exactly what we do on a daily, weekly basis. Now, like I said, we send the book out, 
We even have an ebook on how, using your self-directed IRA to buy real estate that I, I've created for myself. I've also created this book for our one-on-one -on -one coaching students. They can actually go in and change, the, add to the last chapter, add their information, case studies, and now they have an ebook that they can use as a gift to potential investors. It's a great, great thing. We've, I love it, giving it to people because it's an opportunity. All right. Yes, we wrote it. We tweaked it. Now they got to tweak it and add the end thing. You know, you may be, people are looking to network. We started when we did an event like our mastermind a couple of years ago in Cape Coral. Uh, obviously, we didn't have one last year because of COVID. But in Cape Coral, we, you see up here, we literally started a meetup group, Distressed Debt Investing in the New Year. That was the title of it. It's now called the Cape Coral Note and Self-Directed Investors Meetup. All right. We actually, it's pretty easy to set up a meetup. You can do this in your own backyard by just getting people together for dinner, for coffee, for lunch on a you know, Saturday or an evening once a month and start connecting with people. And we invited people to the group. And we had, you know, I had, uh, I had 50 people come to Cape Coral for a mastermind. We did this meeting. We did a, I was opening nights, always a cocktail and happy hour for us. So why not invite some other people out? So we invited it out. We said, I dropped out, I dropped 3,500 postcards in the surrounding area. We had 20 people show up. Now, some people are like, oh, Scott, that's less than 1%. Yes, but those 20% were great. We raised a half a million dollars off of those 20 people. One person came in and said, okay, I got 250 million to do something. Another person said, I got 50 to start off with another couple to 100. It was a beautiful thing. It paid for itself. All right, some of those people are still investing with me to this day, three years, almost four years later. And, and that's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, that's not hard to do. Everybody can do this. You could go to meetup.com right now and start a meetup group. All you need is five people to opt in to it and go from there now. The thing that we also do, the second step, the second phase after we send a postcard out, okay, if we get a bunch of them back, all right, you know, we put our return address and it gets returned unavailable, then we remove those people because those addresses are no longer good because now we're going to drop a mail piece to them. Now, here's one thing, a bit of magic that you can do with your either your postcards or your letters. Now, we don't send regular business white envelopes out. That's a party envelope. You know, if you get a party invite from somebody, it's bigger. We buy the ones from uh, you know, FedEx office or Walmart where it's the big bundles where it's like multicolor, bright colors. I do not want white. It's the cheapest. It looks like a bill. People don't open their mail when it looks like a bill, but they open their mail when it looks like a party invite. And that's what we do. We send it out, we, but we send out, basically it's like a six to seven page mailer. Very nice uh, paper. It's a little glossy to it. It looks good. We send them our hello letter. Hey, hello, came across your information. Thought you might be somebody uh, in Dallas County, they may have used your IRA, your self-directed IRA to buy a, a property for investment. Great. Uh, if you did fund this for an investment, great. If you didn't, just disregard the letter. Uh, you know, we're partner. I'm a, you know, inverse investments. We close notes. We're an awesome based investment firm buying distressed assets. We've been in business since 2007. And, uh, you know, whatever. We've recently closed on a couple of deals or an award or whatever it might be. Why am I writing you this letter? It's because of two simple reasons. One, First off, I'm hoping to build a large list of buyers for our notes. And two, second reason is that we are looking joint venture partner uh, with more partners help us take down larger portfolios of notes by getting better deals at steeper discounts. Please see the sample deals I've included to give you a feel for what we do, okay? Um, come across all types of uh, residential commercial deals for short term, give me a phone call, shoot me an email, whatever, connect with me. Or hey, in this letter, I was actually an attending an event in the area. I said, hey, if you'd love to come on out and I'd love to meet with you. Well, I sent this out to 500 people, I had 10 people come to my event in Austin from San Antonio, Dallas, <laughs> Waco, because I pulled people that had bought a property with their IRA and I sent them this letter three weeks before the event. I made a couple of people show up, it was great. They came to see me speak in front of an audience. I know not everybody's speaking, I get that, but you could invite them, hey, come on out to our, our local RIA that meets once a month or every other week. You know, that's, those are little things that you can do. Now, besides this letter, which this letter is in our workbook for our virtual note buying workshop, okay? You also have an executive summary. I include an executive summary on the back of this letter. So it talks a little more about me, a little bit about the business, about what we're doing, what you're focused on. I include a couple case studies. I also include an article that I've pulled about IRA investors. So I'm using third-party proof. It's not me. It's actually two case studies an investor longer term and then one shorter term. Um, that I actually wrote the article and it was in Think Realty Magazine, um, Investor Review for Self-Directed IRAs. And I, so I, that's a front and back. So basically you have one page letter, one page executive summary, that's one sheet of paper, okay? You have two or three case studies that could be two, 
another page or two, or you put them in, shorten them down if you want to. And then you've got, um, you know, your case, your, your letter there where the, the investor thinks it's really talking really three to four pages of paper front and back. Now printing, yes, color printing gets expensive. I'm not going to argue with you on that. Maybe you do these black and white. But the point is, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to get at, ladies and gentlemen, just doing something that most people, they get this in the mail, like a party involved. What's this? Who am I? Who invited me? And they're open up like, this is interesting. This is the thing that we get from people. Like, that was interesting. I really enjoyed what you sent me. Because when they call you, they may want to ask questions about the deals. And that's okay. Talk, talk with them. The whole idea here is to get these people just to reach out to you to do something. Now, when we pulled 2,000 IRA vendors off, we... Uploaded their list into LinkedIn because we had their email addresses. 1,789 of them have LinkedIn profiles. This is the great thing about real estate investors. Most of the people that have an IRA, they're going to have a LinkedIn profile, mostly professional, okay? So 1,789, 17, just under 1,800 of them had LinkedIn profiles. I sent connection requests to all of them. Now, uh, it's kind of the screens, you can see that. Out of that 1,789, I don't know exactly how many connected with me, but I saw that I saw an increase and people viewing my profile. So what did I do? When I saw people looked at my profile, I looked to see who looked at it. And if they were an investor, I would start to come. Hey, saw that you, saw that you connected with me. Saw that you looked at checked my profile. I'd love to talk with you. Now, when I take a bigger list, you know, and shorten it down, you may be surprised who's literally right around you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, on a recent poll I, I did for uh, the company that we pull IRA list, I said, hey, give me every investor basically in Travis County, every IRA investor in Travis County. And it was, you know, like I said, it was a big chunk, like over 32,000 specifically. And I narrowed it down to my one zip code. Now, 78750 is my zip code. It's bordered by like three other ones, but I just focused on the one. There were 64 people specifically in this one zip code, all right, out of those 2,000, all right? And you can see how they mapped out. Now, the star... All, right, all, were the, all these were basically within five minutes away from me. And my star, I'll show you here in a second, should pop up. But these are all investors. What do I have in common with them? Well, I know that they have an IRA. I know they're looking for return on investment. That re investment, that return on investment can vary based on the conversation. Maybe it's 4%. Maybe it's 6 Maybe it's 8 Maybe it's 10 You know, if it's 12 okay. But I would rather, if somebody's not doing anything with their money, just sitting there making nothing, if you offer them a 4% return, that's really double, quadruple what they're making. They're making zero. You give them four, that's better. If you give them six, it's better for them. But when I put my address, that's what my star is where the office is, okay? I had all these people that literally within five minutes away from me. And they're literally like right down the street. Some people live in my same street here. You just had to share with them what you're doing. Share what, get the word. And, and these days, everybody's so claustrophobic and, and, and anti-social. I mean, unless it's on a social media here, we're not going to go out and talk to our neighbors these days. I'm very blessed that I know all of my neighbors around here. Sometimes Saturday nights, we're all sitting outside in the street here, having a cold one, enjoying each other's company, just talking up a barbecue. And that's not common these days in a lot of cases. It should be. But if every time you get an opportunity to talk with people, or you could go out, if it was close like that, just hand out flyers or door hangers. It's a great start. Very easy for you to do just to get people to call you. And that's what you want. Getting investors to say, hi, I want more information, okay? That's what you're doing with a postcard, a yellow letter, whatever. You just want people to ask for more information, say, hey, I'm interested. And that's where most people's hiney holes tighten up, okay? Most people will say, oh, my God, somebody called off my lead or somebody left me a voicemail or an email. Oh, my God, what do I do? They start flipping out. Ah! You know what I mean? Running around like they're scared to death, like it's Halloween every night. <laughs> it's not the chainsaw massacre. It's literally something here to help you out. And you have to realize when you do that, you should be excited. Yes, excited, but just take a steep breath and don't be so nervous. Realize, hey, you're on the right track. If you do that and you get any type of response the first time you do something, that's awesome. 80% of sales are made up for the fifth contact. It should get you rock and roll. I say, if I got this with just one thing, imagine if I did this a two, a second, a third, a fourth time. Okay. Now, what you have to realize when you're talking to these people, they say reach out to you. It's just a call or a meeting between two people. It's just a conversation. Hey, thanks for answering my letter. You know, uh, and, and the thing people's like, okay, what do you say? How do you start these conversations off? And it, here, it's 
how you start every conversation off. If you're scared to network and you don't come from a networking background, you're a bit of a fly on the wall introvert, that's okay. All you got to remember is one word. One word, okay? One word when you're talking to investors to get the ball rolling, to get that momentum going. And it's the word, where you know, form, F-O-R-M. And what it stands for, form. F stands for where are you from? Like if somebody, are you from Austin originally? Are you, are you from Ohio originally? What, you know, it depends on where you're mailing the list out, but where are you from? Okay. Where are you from? What do you do for a living? What's your occupation? What do you do? Oh, okay. What'd you do for fun? What'd you do this weekend? You know, I literally, I was calling, I'll, I'll give you a great example. I called uh, at four o'clock, well, right before four o'clock my day to Miami day. And I was talking, I was tracking down. Uh, some information on a bar to see if there was a tenant paying the water bill or if it was if a property was vacant or was tenant occupied, trying to find out how long that tenant had been in the house. Found out it had been in there for four years and it was not the name of the bar where it was at somebody else's and he had had other properties around the area but moved but had been lived in that house for four years. And we just got to talk. I said, well, where are you from Miami originally? I'm talking to a guy on the phone and you've worked for Miami Dade forever and what did you do for fun this week? And he told me, oh, yeah, we had fun, took the kids out for trick or treating we went and looked at some houses and we got this great conversation, build rapport. Look, oh, you're looking to buy. That's awesome. He didn't know me from Adam. But at the end, he's like, hang on a second. He went and gave me more information because I built rapport in the initial thing. I just come in and said, I told him something with a bank. We're, kind of, we're getting ready to foreclose. I just want to see if this property is occupied and the water's on, utilities on, if it's the same name, because we're not getting any information from the borrower. And he's like, oh, I can't, I can't give you too much. And then he became a lot more friendly as we built it. If you went and said, oh, what are you looking to invest in? That's beating them. That's like the whole force. You know, you don't want to have high stress sales. You're literally getting to know somebody. You're building a relationship. You're, you're technically kind of starting to date. You wouldn't go to some girl or some guy and say, hey, let's 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 get married and have kids today. You know, you're like, well, no, let's, would you like to go for coffee? Would you like to go to dinner? Would you like to do it? Let's do it again. You know what I mean? Oh, maybe get a first kiss or hold a hand or, you, you know what I mean? A little uh, hokey pokey. Where it might be. But the point is, is, is this form method, F stands for where are you from? O stands for what's your occupation? What do you do for a living? R stands for what do you do for fun, recreation? And M is your message. Like, hey, Jim, it's great. No, you're, you know, you're in, uh, you're in Ohio. That's great. Awesome. It's, it's been, and I, I really asked for, I'll repeat back what they told me. I, that's great to know that you've lived in Columbus for 20 years and that you're, uh, working currently as a software engineer and then you like, and then you like going out and having fun. You like going out and rec uh, recreating civil war battles. That's awesome. I love, I'm glad to do that. Or you're getting to spend time with the kids or your big green Bay Packers or whatever it might be. Okay. Then you transition to the M which is the message. Well, here's what I do. I want to thank you for just spend time talking to me here for a few minutes and then answering the letter or postcard we sent out. What we do is I've been an active real estate investor for two years, 20 years, whatever. It doesn't freaking matter. I've been an active real estate investor for years now, focused on buying distressed real estate, whether it's foreclosed homes or I'm buying distressed notes, something, whatever it might be, foreclosed distressed real estate at a big discount. And that's when you go into your message. It's a short little message, okay? Now, whatever your message is, you got to realize here, you want your message to be short, but you also want to ask questions and then you want to shut up. When you ask questions, shut up. Okay, God gave us two ears and two eyes and one mouth. That means we need to watch and we need to listen twice the amount that we talk. Okay, so if you're constantly, if you're if you're interrupting the person talking or they're giving the answer, trying to go to the next one because you're so worried about getting you know thrown up on them bleh, or getting diarrhea of the mouth and just vomiting all over on them with information, that's not what you want to do. You don't need to teach them how the sausage is made. You just need to say the sausage is this. Okay. Hey, have you invested in real estate before? How did that turn out for you? Are, are you invested in anything else? Have you taken any real estate classes? What, what excited you about the letter? Okay. You know, and depending if you're meeting this person in person or over the phone or via Zoom, whatever it might be, try in, in a really great sales technique because you're really all in sales. You're actually selling them on your investment or they're selling you on not to invest with you. If somebody's making a sale either way. Just mirror your potential investor because people will mirror People will invest with people that like and trust that they identify with. If you're, if the person you're talking to is really quiet and soft-spoken, if you're really loud and crazy, they're out. They're probably going to be like, ah, 
not invest with it because they don't feel comfortable. They talk real fast and real fast and they talk real slow. You have to slow your speed down. This is the thing I struggle with because I get so excited about what I do and I speak fast, right? My buddy Tom Hazard says, with that, who manages our, pod, our, our podcast, he says, I, I probably feed in, I, I probably squeeze in twice the amount of words that the normal person gets in. So when I'm talking with people, I don't want to drink a lot of coffee. I sure as heck don't want to drink a Red Bull. I want to bring it down. I want to match their energy, their loudness, their speed, however they're talking. I want to match it so that they understand it, so that it builds rapport there. And you always ask this question, what have you invested in before, okay? And how has that done or performed? How did that go for you? And shut up. If they haven't invested in real estate before, that's fine. Have you invested in anything before? No. Okay, they're probably going to say no at that point. Not necessarily, but if they haven't pulled the trigger even on buying and, and investing in their 401k or anything, they're probably not going to pull the trigger on you. It just depends, but getting talking to them. Okay, now here's the thing. Never, ever, ever judge a book by its cover. When I was starting off as a financial advisor, and I've been trained on asking questions by some of the best sales companies out there, Verizon Wireless, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, um, golly, Chase, Manhattan Bank One, some of the best sales training out there. Never judge what they're wearing. They could be coming from something, could be going doing from something. I, I, you know, biggest mistake I made early on is I judged a guy who wanted me to meet him in his trailer in his trailer park. I showed up, he had his green, you know, shirt on and a big semi trailer. I was like, oh, this guy's not gonna be money. And he had 250 grand to plop with me uh, to invest in stuff. So never ever judge a book by its cover. Always go into it realizing that, hey, everybody's a funding source. It may not be them, but they may know somebody. So you always have to realize. It's an opportunity for you to give your pitch, to, to sell your craft, to hone your stuff by talking with anybody you can talk with, okay? Now, I always ask, hey, what are you looking for? You know, investments, what are you looking for? Are you looking for, a, a, what kind of term? Are you looking for like a short period of time, like three years or less or five years or less, like a CD? Are you looking for a decent above average? Are you looking for return? I mean, when somebody asks, when, when somebody says that, when you ask them what they've invested and they tell you what they've invested, always in a CD, it's like, oh, how's that doing? I'm going to tell you all like 1% or 2% or negative percent. Keep that in mind because that's a great opportunity to say, well, if you're making 1% over here, if I could show you three or four for a short period of time of like, you know, three years or less, would that be something interesting? Yes, of course. Some people need cash flow. If they're older, they need to get some cash flow coming off their stuff. They may be living off it. If it's in a self-directed IRA, they can't touch it, so they can't live off it. Maybe they just need to make sure it's, it's low risk, whatever it might be. These are great questions to ask, but then listen. You have to listen to what people will tell you because they will tell you their hot buttons. They will tell you their hot buttons. Oh, I, you know, you know, I, I you know, I, I, ooh, six percent. Ooh, if we can get that, that sounds risky. Okay, great. Now you don't also if somebody comes to you, I want to make twenty percent or fifteen percent. They're probably not the right people to work with. Well, this probably is not for you because on these returns, yes. Total profit is probably around 20%, but we've got to make some. We've got to make some. We've got to pay people. So if somebody wants 15, 20% and they're not doing it, then make them go do it themselves. Hey, this isn't the right time for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Best of luck to you. Okay. And the question is, you always have to ask them because the last thing you want to do is go through a presentation, be all excited, and then come back. Well, I got a thousand bucks. <laughs> I got 5,000. Okay, great. I got a hundred dollars. Can I invest with you now? How much are you looking to invest? What are you looking to? Okay, what are you, how much are you looking to put to work? 25, 50, 75, you know, I, I love to, I wish I could help everybody, but when people come to me like, I got 10 grand or I got 15 grand, I'm like, ah, that's a little too less. It's not enough to do anything with it, really. Let's get you, you know, hey, let's maybe have you do something later on or let you keep building that and we'll go from there, okay? You really don't want to invest with anybody who's got less than 25 grand. And, and an important thing too, where are the funds coming from? Oh, I'm going to show up with a bag of cash uh, at National City, when we get across the border from Mexico, $25,000 cash. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. What's coming from a line of credit? Okay, is there interest rates of line of credit? Oh, it's coming from a, a CD I'm cashing out or closing on a deal. I'm getting a check on this. I'm going to run and roll into something else and I'm doing work or it's in an IRA right now. Find out where the funds are coming from because you need to know. Oh, it's coming from my trading account. Okay. So if it comes from a trading account, then you know you've got to do some work to get them to set it into a self-directed IRA. If it's just coming from their checking or savings account, that's pretty easy with a wire. But if it's coming from a Scott Trade or a AG Edwards or something like that, you know you got to create another account for them at, at Equity Trust or Quest Trust or Rocket Dollar. Go from there. Okay. So what do you need? 
what do you need or what do I need, Scott, to make sure I'm rock and rolling? Well, you got to have, first and foremost, people are going to go do their due diligence. So make sure you have a complete LinkedIn profile. Make sure you also have a website. Yes, a website is necessary these days. Now, you don't have to wait to start marketing for money until your website's ready. You can start marketing now. You can send people to your LinkedIn profile. Okay, you just have a forwarding link. That way they go check you out on LinkedIn. Don't wait for the perfect website before you start doing it. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Start getting the word out. I mean, I've got plenty of people that raise capital without ever, ever having a website because they relied on their case studies. They relied on their team around them. They didn't have a website. They put one in together. They weren't spending money on a website. They were spending money on the direct mail blast to make things happen. It's good to have a sample presentation with a sample deals or a pitch deck. That's we've talked about creating a perfect pitch deck out there. All right, you can see that on our YouTube channel, perfect pitch deck. You may want to have a small presentation. I mean, something that's not 20, 30 pages long, but something that's maybe, you know, three, four pages long that you can flip with. So here's the types of deals that we do and talk about the cases. Here's what we do and what we're looking for in our vendors, our team. Now, that's I want to bring this up because this is the one question I get all the time. Well, I'm going to go prove this concept. Screw that. I got to prove concept. The concepts aren't even proven, jackass. Okay. You don't have to prove anything. If you got a mortgage, guess what? The, pro the concept has been proven. It's just on that the bank is on that opposite side. It's time for you to be on that side now. Okay. And if you haven't done any deals, that's okay. Talk about the types of deals that you do. These are some of the past case studies, types of deals that we're doing. We, you can say team. I have got a team of people. I got a VA. I've got I got attorneys, okay? I've got my servicing company. Name them off. May have a little logo. Here's our team. You know, here's my wife and me. And then our friend, Laura, who does, uh, does a lot of the due diligence for us. And our VA, Jack Jesslin, okay? And then we have Madison Management. And here's Kevin over at Madison Management. He's done thousands of deals. Here's Daniel Singer, our attorney. who's our master attorney handling stuff. There's Scott Carson. The guy's been teaching me for years. Whatever it might be. Rely on their strength. If they ask you how many deals you've done, say, hey, you're looking to close your first deal first. Hey, if, if you've got your systems down and everything in place and the deal makes sense, hey, why not? Talk about the market opportunities. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we've had so much amazing headlines when it comes to the distressed market, the big turn down. People are going to ask you, what happens to the market crash? That's good. That's good for us because we're buying assets at 50 to 60% of current market value. It's not going to crash that bad, but we're buying these deals at a big discount and people want to stay in their house. So maybe you throw in a couple of news articles, okay? But these are the types of deals we do. I've had people use my case studies for years and they've raised capital from it, okay? This is my team. This is my staff. This is my coach, okay? And then I asked them, hey, does this feel like something you're interested in? Okay, would you like to, you know, you want to get on our hot list? Do you want to, Talk about, you want to talk about the next steps. Okay, this sounds like something you're interested in. Hey, should we move to the next level? Should we get a little bit more serious? Yeah, let's take it to that next step. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid to ask that. If you go through the information and never get the ask, then you just wasted your time. And this is the ask, okay? Hey, do you feel like this is something that you might be interested in and doing? Or partner with me on this stuff or a fun and a deal to get your feet wet? What do you say? What are you thinking? And you know what? People will say either no, and that's okay. Not everyone is a yes. I always look at when somebody tells me no, not right, it means not now, okay? A no is good. It means not now, okay? Come back to me later. Okay, great. I'll be glad to do that. I'll add you to my list. Here's the, here's the thing. You have to realize if they tell you no right now, you probably just need to get better at your, 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 your pitch, your talk. The thing that they raised their hand and said, yes, is all you need. You've got their name, their phone number, their email address. You can now add them to your drip marketing campaign. And you know what's going to happen? As you market, hey, I got another deal and I got another case study. Hey, just closed on that. That will help them say yes. Like, oh, Steve actually is closing some deals. Oh, David actually knows this stuff. Look at him. Kudos. All right. I know is good. It's okay. I embrace the nose. I know that it took me. 40 no's before I got my first yes as an investor. That was all in one day, okay? I know it took me 69 no's to get yes from well, uh, from uh, Capital One. I know it took me 54 no's before I got my first yet for buying a, por a portfolio. No's are okay. No means not now. It doesn't mean don't ever call me back. Like, okay, if you talk to them and they're on the phone with you or in person, they're not going to sit there and smack you in the face. They do. They got issues. 
But the point I'm trying to get is, we talked about this before, avoid your low balance investors. If they, if they don't have 25 grand to invest or they don't have that much in the market or anything like right now, they're just not a good fit for you. And a no could be you saying no to them too. Like, listen, 20, you only got 15 grand, that's great. Just not enough to really go. Our, our normal starting points from somewhere between you know 35 and 50 around that neck of the woods, okay? And I only do one investor per deal. I can't take three tens and put them together to one deal. Now, if you've got two other friends that have 10 grand, you guys can start an LLC and I can borrow that money from an LLC. That's a different thing, but I can't go and bring 10, 10, and 10 and, and pull you all together. That's a, illegal for me. You're not going to be doing a split of equity. You're going to be doing initially, ladies, I'm, I'm looking, we're giving people just a flat loan rate, you know, four, six, eight, or 10%, okay? And this is the thing. If they have less experience, less experience and they're not on your end, if they don't have a lot of experience, don't be going at 12%. They'll think that's risky because that's what they're taught, okay? Go at a four to 6% interest. I could give you 6% return on your money for 24 to 36 months. Would that excite you? And cash it out in 36 months, maybe do it again. Yeah, let's do it. Trust your gut. This is an important thing. If it's telling you no, listen to it. If it tells you that you're just getting something wrong about the person, you just don't like how they feel. I've had people that I just had a gut and then I find out they try to change the interest rate in the loan documents or they would, you know, put me off, put me off. And then I find out, you know, after we had them in the office, stuff like that, just trust your gut. If it's telling you no, they're just not the right person. Like I said, not everyone is going to be a yes for you. It's better still to have friends than enemies. I said, listen, I just don't, I just, I don't like where we're going. I just don't think we're a fit. You know, I'd rather as part as friends and uh, maybe in the future. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, you get better by practicing and role-playing your pitch. This is why it's important to put these things. You want to get better at talking to people? Know your craft. Know what's going on in deals. Do not go in a meeting just like, ah, throwing some shit together and throw it on the side of the wall, see what stick. This is one of the best, and this one of the number one sales trainings I could tell you. It's put together, you know, like if you're going to put together a slideshow, make it less than 10 slides, but practice it, practice it, practice it. Practice in front of your spouse, in front of your kids, your, your cousin, your coworkers, whatever it might mean, not the job, but you get what I'm saying, your friends, your next door. Hey, do you mind? I'm going to go do something. Could you do me some help? Can I role play in front of me? Can I show you what I'm doing? I'm going to go meet with an investor and I'm really scared. I'm a little nervous. Okay. All right. And as your people are role playing, they ask you questions. Or the people are talking to you, write down their questions. If they're asking you questions, write down their questions. That shows that you're listening to them. They will appreciate. It. If you don't know an answer, don't lie and say something crazy and say, "Listen, I'm not 100 percent sure about that, but I can get back to you." Okay. But practice, 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 practice at calling banks. As I practice it. Practice at talking to investors. Practice going through your pitch. Part of the whole reason we put our, our pitch deck up there. So you can see me talking, going through it. You got to practice it multiple times, all right? Well, I want to record it. Yes, practice it because you're going to screw it up and not know what the hell you're going to talk about. It needs to basically, I won't say flow off you. You're not going to flow off your tongue immediately, but it's just a little bit of time, okay? Now, the next steps, if they're happy and ready to rock and roll, you, you, then you want to pull out your investor questionnaire. And it uses a form you do not want to put online. You want to have it actually out separate from whatever you're going to give them, Okay. Now, you've already asked them half the questions. What do they do? How long have they done that for? You know, what, what's their, you, you know, uh, what, where is the money coming from? How much are they looking to invest? That's all written in there. What have they done as far as real estate investing? The investor questionnaire, you can literally fill this out and fill in the rest of the information. What's their income? Have them fill out, ask them the question. Well, if you're ready to rock and roll, then here's the next steps. I need you to fill out this investor questionnaire. If you don't want to do it right now, that's fine. You can, but I need you to send it back to me. I also need you to send it back with a proof of fund letter which is just basically a statement, quarterly statement or bank statement showing the funds that you have. And then I just need it in the email, you send it back to me, just say, Scott, there's 200 grand in this account. I'm pledging 50 grand to you for the next 12 months. There's no, they get chicken feet and, and you know, uh, scaredy cat and, and balk, that's fine, let them balk. But still, these things help you get better at what you're doing. It also shows that they're yes. They say yes to me, with that's a yes one. Two, yes, to fill out the investor, pressure, uh, investor questionnaire. Three, Proof of funds, fourth yes, is the pledge letter. Now, if they don't send the investor question back, they don't send the proof of funds letter or the pledge letter, they're not going to fund, okay? So here's my magic rule. I will only follow up with people on these three times because I'm not going to bother them beyond that. Now, they've met with me once, great. I say, hey, I've got a deal coming down the pipeline. If you want to get this thing rock and rolling, I need you to send me that back to the investor questionnaire and then a proof of funds and then a pledge letter. 
Because if they're not going to do that, then you need to move on to the next. If people aren't serious, do not let people waste your time. Next, 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 okay? Now, especially if it's coming from a retirement account, and it's not like a true self-directed IRA custodian trustee, you're going to have to have them start that process uh, to transfer it over. So you got to get them on the phone or make an email introduction to somebody in an account. Rep. Make friends with somebody at Quest or Equity or Mountain View, whatever it might be, and monitor, make the interest, hey, just want to get started. And then I will follow up with, hey, did this person reach out to you? Did they get their form started? If they didn't, I'll let you go back. Hey, if you need some help filling out this direction stuff, I'm glad to help you. Okay. Uh, those that have reached out to you. Now, if they haven't filled out their investor question, got to, you add them to your hot list. You still add them to your hot list. Now, I've got a hot list that we send a text message out to. Hey, I got a deal I'm looking for funding on. It's 100 grand or 50 grand. That's my hot list via email and a text message. Okay. That's a reminder because, oh, I want to get involved. Well, then I need your shit, man. <laughs> need you to send me your stuff so I can put this because the, these are the things I need. My accountant, my attorney says, I need this from you to protect my assets. When you say that, like, oh, okay, that sounds better. Your attorney or your accountant wants these, yes, to, to proof up that you're a real investor. Okay. Right. Yeah. And this is a beautiful thing is sending like an email or using easy, uh, easy texting your hot list look email them your current deals if they said no or they didn't return still keep them on the list because it may take some time to come around but i'm only going to ask them three times for the investor question if they don't send it to me a third time i'm going to say they're not ready but we'll still add them to the hot list and keep moving on okay and we add to our newsletter okay if you close a deal you know hey you may want to highlight them hey so and so just especially when you close a deal and you send their money but hey and hey so and so you got their monthly interest check or they just got their payoff on a deal okay and then, of course, connect with them, follow up with them, see if they've got a LinkedIn profile, connect with them on there. Because as you're posting other deals, you want them to see an email from you on social media, you're posting about deals. They're like, oh, he, may, he said he didn't have a lot of experience, but he really is sharing some great stuff online. And the only way you're going to get better at this, ladies and gentlemen, is to practice, practice, practice. All right. Now I want to open up right now for some questions. Anybody got some questions they want to ask about some of the things that we discussed? So they still got some fears in their head. You know, there's not, I mean, it's a matter of first and foremost, getting the word out what you're doing and getting people to contact you. That's the first thing, whether it's going networking and doing the old one-on-one -on -one way or going out and starting to connect with people online. They say they're investors or LinkedIn. That's a way that we do it as well. Or actually sending out, a letter or a postcard starting that ball going. That's the only direct mail that we do. But if you're looking for people in your area, guys, all you got to do is drop me an email. I bet you I could tell you in five minutes, I could jump online and see how many people in your area and show you how to pull it. It's not hard. We've done it all the time on our virtual workshop and walk you through that in a lot of cases. Okay. Uh, Catherine Bell, I got to give Catherine a big kudos. I don't think she's on here tonight. Um, she did this. We were out working with her one on one, two days in Phoenix. We pulled a list of 700. IRA investors that had bought a property or funded something around the two counties there, around uh, Maricopa County. And she sent out uh, letters to them, the exact letters that I told you. We helped her write them, sent them out. First, and within three days of her drop it, she got a phone call from an investor she talked to who pledged 200 grand to her for some of her investments. 200 grand, first phone call. She's all jacked up. She sent me a picture of her taking it. She's just so excited. I mean, that made the, all the mailings for the next year to send out to get 200 grand worth it. You know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, uh, Prod says, thanks, Scott, for great, great appreciation. Yeah, call me on the 48. Jim says, I, I will when I get my bids back, Jim. I'm going to be looking at my portfolio first, bud. <laughs> I'll call you with what I don't end up taking myself. All right. But anyway, guys, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. You just got to start doing something. That's what it comes down to more than anything else. Um, Practice, practice, practice. We've role played. You see me go through things. There's different presentations online. You know, if you know, we've even thought about taking together and doing a one day workshop just on helping you guys kind of put your things together and practice. If that's something you're interested, let me know. Glad to do it. But you, you have to take the action. You have to take the foot first footsteps. Okay. You know what's what's sad is I see people on here that I know can do big things that aren't doing anything. They're doing the bare minimum, trying to get by the bare minimum. And you can't do the bare minimum. The bare minimum will get you bare minimum, if not negative results. It's not hard. And the only way you get comfortable at doing things is by going out and taking action and practice, practice, practice. The only way I got good as a linebacker in, in high school and college is I practice and practice every day. It's the only way I got better as a 
uh, working for Enterprise Rent a Car. We practiced, we role played. We went and talked with people. We got in the, got in the game when I was working at Verizon Wants. Why I was the number one sales guy because I practiced and I role played more. Why I was a great financial advisor and banker with Chase, number one in the state, um, was because I practiced, I role played. I role played, I role played. And it's also led into why I'm a good loan officer, was a good loan officer and a good note investor because I'm not afraid to talk with people. I'm not afraid to role play. I, you're going to screw up. You got to realize every time you screw up, you get better at what you do. And some people are scared of their shadows, scared to screw up. It's okay. Guess what? Next, next. There's hundreds of thousands of investors out there. One screw up with one, forget it. Move on to the next one. That Let one person affect your whole rest of your day or rest of your week or rest of your what you do. It's, it's beneath you. You guys are all better than that. So any questions, comments, concerns? If you guys could do me a huge favor, I don't really ask a lot of things for me, but if you guys could do me a favor, we're really looking to add some new uh, reviews. So if you enjoy the Note Night in America, we're doing this live. And if you listen to the podcast or you like the Note Closure Show podcast, could you do me a favor? Can you go over to iTunes and take five minutes to leave me a five-star review and uh, uh, you know a five-star, hit the subscribe button to either Note Night in America, Note Closure Show, or go to both and, and just leave a review. Five-star review, I would love it. It would help me out a lot. If you do that, I will probably reward you with something special. So make sure you... Do it, take a screenshot, shoot, shoot me a screenshot, especially if you have a weird URL. But Apple, iTunes, if you type in Note Night in America, Apple Podcast, you should take you there and be able to hit a review and go from there. So I want to thank you all for joining me. If there's no other questions or comments, we'll let you guys go tonight. But thanks for coming on strong. You all are capable of doing amazing things, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all top, everybody. Bye.